So you want to make money, you want to invest, but there's so much jargon out there from ETFs, Bitcoin, Fed, interest rate, basis point. There's so much different terms that make you feel like I can't start investing, which is why in today's video, I'm going to break down why should you invest, what you can invest in and how to invest. The whole point of investing is you want your money to work for you. You want your money to produce more money and that can only be done literally by investing. Whether it's you want your money to increase by 2% or you want it to go all the way to the moon and 10x. To boil it down, you want to earn Earn a return on your money above the inflation rate and since you can't do that by investing in a bank account or in a savings account then you have to invest your money in other ways what most people do is they work hard they save their money in a bank account or if i don't know you were born in the 1960s probably put it under your mattress <laughs> Most people put their money in a bank account. The problem with that is inflation. Inflation literally eats your money. Let me explain. If you save your money in a bank account, let's say the standard savings account like the one you have at Lloyd's right now, you'd only earn 0.65% on your money. So for example, if you deposit £1,000 when you open the account, the balance after 12 months is only £1,006.50. At the same time, if the inflation rate like it is right now is around 10, 9%, the cash in your savings account is actually losing more value than you are gaining by investing. So after after one year, the cash of £1,000 will actually only be worth £100. What we want is for our money to work for us. So let's imagine we can earn 10% by investing in a specific index fund. £1,000 invested in year one gains 10%. And by the end of year one, your money will actually be worth £1,100. After another year, another 10% gain, it's worth £1,210. And after the third year, it's worth £1,330. The gains will continue to grow because each year, your money is made from the previous year's profit. And let's assume inflation was like 2% like it wasn't good or this because your money you're investing is getting 10% a year and the inflation is 2% what you're actually earning on that money is 8% now to the fun part what can you actually invest in before 2020 before we all stuck at home basically just becoming day traders oh <gasps> man you need to be <laughs> everyone probably only took the falling asset classes serious stocks commodities real estate and bonds and maybe if you're a bit fancy some art or post 2020 now we have crazy monkey nfts piece of land the metaverse crypto bitcoin all sorts of different let's now ignore other asset classes i'm only speaking about equities let's say you want to invest in an equity the more have only two options well let's ignore mutual funds you have just two options index funds and individual stock for an individual stock let's say it's apple or microsoft if you want to invest one thousand pound in that it means you're buying a certain percentage of apple or of microsoft so your one thousand pound is invested solely in apple or microsoft whereas for an index fund let's say the s p 500 which is the top 500 company in the united states by market cap your one thousand pound is divided against the five Hundred companies in that in next one based on the market cap. So if Apple is 6% of the entire fund, that means 60 pounds invested in only Apple. And if Microsoft is 5%, that means 50 pounds is invested in Microsoft. The main advantage of index fund is diversification. As you can see, your money spread across different companies rather than just being invested in just Apple or Microsoft. So your money is actually spread across different kinds of companies from Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, Bank of America, all sorts of companies with different industries as well. So it's a good thing because they're well diversified. Another advantage of investing in index funds over individual stocks is index funds are more passive meaning if you invest in individual stocks you have to keep up to date with all the financials so each quarter the company it will obviously list its financials so you have to actually check that and see how the company is performing and make a judgment on that also you have to keep on top of the news so you have to know if for example it's tesla you have to know what Elon Musk is always doing because management strategy and how the management acts and performs influences the stock price so you have to keep on top of so many different things which is why a lot of people actually push towards index Next one in the last couple of years of the day when someone is investing what they care about is the price appreciation and also dividend yield or i don't know rental income if you have a property so for example let's take equities asset class what you care about is the price of the equity to go up so that you earn a return on your money invested and if it pays a dividend they actually earn dividends as well this could be monthly quarterly or yearly depends depends on the company so now we know why we want to invest and what we can invest in but how do we actually invest how do we actually do this investing thing it's very simple all you need to do is create an account with a broker of your choice. If you're in the UK like I am, there are loads of different brokers. I'm not endorsing any of the ones I'm going to mention in this video, but there's Vanguard, Trading212, Fidelity, Free Trade, Charles Schwab. There's loads of different brokers. All you have to do is open an account with the broker of your choice. And now you have to decide, are you going to open a normal investment account or an ISA? At the most simplest level, those are your two options. The benefit of an ISA is you can invest up to £20,000 in a year and not pay any income tax on the gain from that account. Now you have to decide, 
how frequently am I gonna put money in this account? And there are two schools of thought for that. There's a lump sum and the dollar cost averaging. Let's say you're somehow lucky, you actually won the lottery and you're given 120,000 pound cash prize. I have to decide to invest in a specific stock. Investing all of that money today, we called a lump sum. Whereas what people can actually decide to do is, they have 120,000 pounds, they put some of it in their savings and only invest 1,000 pounds a month for 12 months. That will actually achieve the same goal. You've both invested 120,000 pounds, but just at different times. Someone's invested all their money straight at once and someone actually invested their money over a period of time. But what's actually better? Based on research, dollar cost average will always underperform lump sum investing because of time. Time is literally what matters in investing like we talked about in the beginning. That cash is stuck in a bank account, not generating any return. So it doesn't make sense to leave it there when you can invest all of it at once and actually earn a return that can beat inflation. That's only what I like to do and what most people would actually do because we all probably work a nine to five for most of us watching this video. What I'll do is every month, I take a certain percentage of that money and invest that directly into my specific brokerage account. So how much do you actually need to start investing? You can start investing with as little as one pound. Let me explain. You can start investing with just one pound because of fractional shares. So let's say for example, a company has 100 shares in issue and you actually want to buy one share. In the past, if that one share cost 20 pounds, you have needed 20 pounds to own just one part of the company. But what's happened right now is due to fractional shares, you can actually buy a share for one pound because you can own one 1,000 of a specific company. So thanks for watching that video, guys. Hope you found it useful. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And let me know the kind of videos you want to see from me in the comments or any specific topic I can cover almost anything finance slash banking related and even personal stuff like productivity. So let me know in the comments and see you in the next video.